So, Discovery's finally out. Here we are. Um, it's been such a long wait, 12 years since Enterprise went off the air or something like that, to finally see Star Trek back in the Prime Universe, back on TV as a show. Um, it's been a long wait since the original announcement of Discovery, and it's been definitely worth it. I just got finished watching um, The Vulcan Hello and Battle at the Binary Star, the first two episodes, and I'm blown away. Seriously, it's it, it's that good. It's everything I've hoped for, um, apart from some very minor quibbles that I knew how I I know how you could do differently, but it would require a whole. It would make the show basically very new viewer unfriendly because it would require a whole lot of explanation of why stuff is the way it is. So I definitely understand why they did this. So. Let's go all through, through all the positive stuff real quick. Um, it is definitely Star Trek. It is a, a bigger setting, grander scales than we've ever seen in TV Star Trek before. Um, you can definitely see that the that they're spending a whole lot of money on this. It's rivaling Games of Thrones in terms of um, budget, and it shows. It's beautiful. Um, it's definitely set in the Prime Universe, you can definitely tell. Of course, it's a visual reboot of the show. You, you can't launch a show uh, in 2017, expect people to pay for it and take it seriously and then have it look like um, a 1960 TV show. You, you just can't. Um, with gummy bears on the keyboards and uh, things like that. I love the original series and I think the look is iconic. But you just can't expect people to stomach this uh, in 2017 and take it seriously and not just camp. It, you just can't. Um, so basically what they did is that they made a visual overhaul of the show, but sticks to canon of the um, original series. And that is, it is a hard, tough balancing act to, to do, and they, they do it. The only... Th point where they really diverge from prime universe canon is the klingons the look of the klingons um you could actually have stuck with the human look of the klingons the way it's set up in the original series where it was basically just um lack of lack of budget that they just took humans and or like the, the Klingon makeup in, in the original series just basically just paint people a little bit dark, it's a little bit of dark face, and and that's it. Um, but the and then the way it was explained later on the show was that oh during the Enterprise era, the humans they dabble with some genetic experiments that they steal some DNA of advanced humans and basically creates a virus that has to the end and the cure for the virus the vaccine basically turns everyone into it re, removes their ridges and makes them look human so and the fun thing is that this whole thing would actually have given the villain to kuvma or the the main antagonist a much better leg to stand on story-wise than he has in the show so basically what happens is that this this Klingon, Tekuvma, he his father found an ancient Klingon um, ritualistic ship that has the function of basically calling all Klingon houses to battle so in case they need to unite against a common enemy. So, and he, he feels, Tekuvma feels that the Federation is encroaching on their territory and that the Klingon identity is in danger. Um, which, if you know the Federation, it isn't. I mean, the Vulcans, for example, are the best example. They're part of the Federation, but they're very much still their own thing. They can, they still have their own culture, their own rituals, and all these things. So the Federation is very respectful of the member planets' individual cultures. And so Tukufma doesn't objectively really have a leg to stand on if you know what the Federation is about. Uh, and he also he can only run this by fear mongering basically and 
incite the other Klingon houses to rise up against or unite against the Federation by basically lying to them or painting the Federation in a in a bad light. Um, and use their own suspicions and paranoia to get the Federation, get them riled up against the Federation. Whereas if you'd actually had used the Augment virus, you could have and that the and the fact that the Klingons should look like humans, which they don't on Discovery. Uh, spoiler alert: um, not just some ancient house that has been secluded, but it seems like all Klingons look um, have the ridges and everything. Um, it would have they could have concocted some conspiracy theory that this was actually a secret weapon attack against the Klingons, um, rather than actually just saving them from their own stupidity um which uh, which is what happened when you saw the augment arc and the augment virus arc in enterprise season four that is what that is how it happened but you could have easily imagined that the klingons would think that oh this you, you could couch this as some form of conspiracy theory to infect the klingon heritage with this human weakness or something like that and the problem with that of course is it would require people to either have seen Enterprise Season 4 and know about the Augment arc, which is something that happened 12 years ago. <laughs> um, or you'd have to spend at least 10 minutes off the show of, of the Discovery pilot to set this up in flashbacks and whatnot. And I, I get why they didn't want to do that. Plus, it, visually, it's just more striking to have the Klingons look like badass Klingons than just have them look like dark-skinned humans and... Um, so I, I definitely understand why they made that choice. It must have been a tough choice to make and try and balance this part of canon. So this is the one bit of canon that they went like, mm, okay, if we throw this one bit out, then we have a big payoff and it's going to make the rest of the show better. So, okay, we'll throw out this one bit. Um, the rest of the show seems very, very um, like it's sticking to canon and the established things they name drop a couple of uh things and in, in the show that have been established on in the original series so they, they're, they're definitely sticking to to canon so i i like that they're sticking to the prime universe and not the jj verse um like some people were screaming about it was like, it's like okay there's this one thing that they changed and that's it basically plus of course the visual reboot but um, the rest of the show is just amazing. I, there are certain a lot of scenes where that are very reminiscent of TOS, like the the dynamic between um, Philippa Georgiou, the captain of the Shenzhou, uh, Michael Burnham, and Lieutenant Saru, their science officer. The way they bicker in between each other, and especially like the Saru and Burnham, they have this very kind of McCoy Spockish relationship. The way they bicker with each, with each other in a very friendly jabby way but um it, it just comes off as really funny and 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 touching and the sense of family that they have on the shenju is just great so um really two thumbs up from for me and i can't wait to see more of this show it's amazing uh to have like after all this waiting of waiting for a new show and then all the Bated breath and the production problems with Sonequa not being able available until much further, and Brian Fuller dropping out of the show, and all these things that made us all worry about um, about the show, and then then it to come out and just basically blow me away, um, and and the only and the only cost is that the Klingons don't look like humans, so I think that's a very good um, payoff or a cost benefit um, bit. So I'll roll with it and I can't wait to see more of the show. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oops, that way. <laughs> Live long and prosper, guys, and keep tracking.